Welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast, where your host, Josh Sweeney, will give you, the business leaders, HR professionals, and company culture aficionados, the knowledge you need to take your company culture to the next level. Hello, my name is Josh Sweeney, and welcome to the Epic Company Culture Podcast. Before we get started, I would like to thank Prototype Prime for this amazing podcast room. Today's topic is preparing for the generational shift. There was a study, a research study that came out recently from SAP that said by 2020, the majority of the workforce, 51% of the workforce will be millennials. Now, I'm not going to get into all the nuance of what millennials do or don't do because that's an age-old tradition of um, talking about the shortcomings of the next generation. The generation before me did it, the generation before them did it to them, and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to buy into that philosophy. What I am going to talk about is how you can be prepared for that shift and what that shift really means from a culture perspective, from a business perspective, and uh, an overall work perspective. Perspective. So the thing that I've noticed with the, the shift that's happening is there's, there's some undertones in the way people work and the way people come together and a lot of other shifts that are going to need to be accounted for in order for your business to be able to keep up with the pace of change. And I'll highlight some of those and give you some examples of what those are going to be. So the first one is company culture. We are going from a place where nobody talks about company culture or a lot of companies don't have a head of culture or a queen of culture or head of fun or any of those titles to a generation that almost expects to have somebody focused on culture. People are going from uh, a generation that went and worked very hard and work was called work for a reason is kind of the model uh, and some of the things that you hear to a generation that says, hey, if I have to be at work all day, I'll work hard. But in putting in those eight, nine and 10 hours a day, I want it to be a place that I want to work for. I want it to have the culture and reflect me and I want it to be company that you know reflects the culture and, and who I am and everybody has a different personality and who they are and they want that reflection in the company that they work for. So overall, there's just a, a huge shift from what you would consider the, the boomer and X uh, style and work office space to the millennial culture and how those office spaces is, is created and the overall work environment. And that leads me to the office environment. You're also seeing the transition of closed off offices from, you know, closed off areas, less collaborative, higher walls, cubicles to more open workspaces. This isn't just a design decision. This isn't something that we want to say, oh, well, you know, this is the new design element and everybody's just doing it because it's the cool thing. The new The generational shift that's happening is looking for more collaboration. They want more events, more ability to collaborate and know the people that are around them. Again, it's not I'm going into work and it should be work and I need to be heads down and I just need to crank out mine, my work. It's I'm going into this place for nine and 10 hours a day. I'm around these people more than I'm around, you know, my family and other friends. So it needs to be a collaborative environment. It needs to facilitate that collaboration. So it's going from that closed off workspace to a much more open workspace with a lot of other um, factors involved. The next one we see is technology. Technology is moving at a lightning pace and will continue to do so and has been for many, many years. And what we're seeing is a lot of people are not going to work for companies that have antiquated technology. If the software and the hardware and the things that I'm used to using at home are not reflected and similar to what I have to use in a work environment, then I'm not going to go work for them, right? And that's what this generation is looking at. If I walk into two different companies, maybe I'm interviewing for a marketing agency position, and one is a very large, old school, more more old school style marketing agency, and the technology is not up to date, and it's antiquated, I get the old laptop, all those technology things that you would think of. And then I have another marketing auto, uh, agency that is the same in every other way, except all of their technology is up to date, and they're using some of the near latest and greatest, well, I'm going to go with that one. And those are the types of things that are being thought of 
from the generation that will be the majority of the workforce in 2020. So what I really want you to think about and what I'm getting at here is what happens in your environment? How is your organization structured and are you ready for the generational shift? Because if the demography and average age of the group and the company now is fundamentally different from the generational shift, then it's usually safe to assume there's also a gap in culture, office environment, technology, and all of these other factors. And the challenge that's going to happen is that's going to also lead to an accelerated pace of getting left behind because it's going to be harder to hire people that are in that new generation, right? At this point, it's millennials and, you know, there'll be another generation with another generational shift and some different needs uh, in the future. But you're going to get left behind at an accelerated pace with all of these things converging at one time. And what I want you to just think about is, what is the age, average age of your office? How are you thinking about and preparing for this generational shift? And what culture changes and what corporate culture changes need to start happening now to ensure when the majority of the workforce in 2020 is millennials that you can offer them the position that they're looking for and be the company that they would like to work for. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of the Epic Company Culture Podcast with Josh Sweeney. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe on iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. For additional content and transcripts, visit epicculture.co. If you have questions or topics you would like us to address or expand on, tweet us at epicculture1 or email at podcast at epicculture.co.